Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. So in today's video, as I promised in the very last video that I'm going to take important questions on VPC and VPN concept. So here I am with the important questions that will cover almost all the aspects of VPCs and VPN to the level that will be good enough for you to pass the AWS Cloud Practitioner exam. But for now, let's not wait any further and dive into the very first question for today. So here comes the very first question for today, question number 241 part 33. The question is saying what is the scope of a VPC which is virtual private cloud within the AWS network. Your options are option A, a VPC can span all the availability zones globally. Then option B, a VPC must span at least two subnets in each AWS region. Option C, a VPC must span at least two edge locations in each AWS region. And lastly, option D, a VPC can span all the availability zones within an AWS region. Now friends, as I just said, we are going to discuss about VPC and VPN in this episode. So we will fully focus on these two concepts. Along with that, we will also understand what are the different kind of scaling, horizontal scaling, vertical scaling. So these kind of questions, my friends, grouped together, they will really help you understand the core concepts of VPC and VPN. And to further strengthen your understanding on VPC, I will show you the AWS documentation. And also along with that, I will also tell you in my own words, what exactly is Amazon VPC? I will also tell you what are the key features, what are the key benefits and how does this actually work. So all about this and post that I will also give you some use cases where you can use VPC. So all of these will really help you understand this core concept and you will be fully geared to answer any question in the real AWS cloud practitioner exam. So now firstly, let's check out the correct answer and that is option D A VPN can span all the availability zones within an AWS region. And also my friends, please do not miss to watch our other videos on Microsoft Azure certification, generative AI, AI, discount coupons, Microsoft exams. So please subscribe to the channel and press that bell icon so that you get the timely notifications of all such important videos. And these videos will surely help you save some money and of course also build a sound cloud career. And here you can see with Amazon Virtual Private Cloud, which is VPC, you can launch the AWS resources in a logically isolated virtual network that you have defined. So this virtual network closely resembles as a traditional network that you would operate in your own data centers with the benefits of using scalable infrastructure of AWS. And also you can understand much more in detail. How does the VPC work? You can see these are the VPC. This is the VPC, which is this green box here. You can see this green line here. And then you can see there are some sub subnets here which are under the internet gateway and all this is under an AWS region which is further divided into availability zones. So all of these concepts my friend we have taken a lot of questions on AWS region availability zones subnets. So please check out all the previous episodes so that you are fully covering the entire syllabus. Then my friends you can understand what are the features of VPC. I will talk about these in just a little while. You can also understand how to get started with Amazon VPC. So let me compile all this information in simple words in my own words. So first of all, let's understand what exactly is VPC. So you can think about Amazon VPC as your own private network within the vast AWS cloud. And it is the virtualized version of the traditional data center network that gives you complete control over your network environment. So you can define your own IP address range. You can also create the subnets. You can also set up the route tables and control the network access. I will tell you about the route tables in just a little while. Let's first understand what are the key features and the benefits of the VPC. And this is really the core essence. Very important to understand that your VPC is isolated from other VPCs providing the enhanced security. Then we have customization. And this talks about the full control that you have over your network setup, including the IP ranges, subnets and routing table. So by using the security groups and the network access control, which is also known as NACL, you can define inbound and outbound table traffic rules. And of course, we cannot forget the scalability. So easily expand your virtual private cloud to accommodate growing workloads. Then we have integration. So using the VPCs, you can seamlessly integrate with other AWS services such as EC2, RDS and S3. 
Now let me very quickly tell you how this all works. Okay, so as a step one, you have to create the VPC. So you have to define your own IP address range using the CIDR block. And by the way, do you know what is the full form of CIDR block? Let me know in the comment section. So you have to create your own IP address range for the VPCs. Then once you have done this, you have to create the subnets and you have to divide your VPC into smaller subnets based on your needs. So you can do some private or public subnetting. And then you have to create the routing tables using which you can determine how the traffic is routed within and outside the VPC. Following that, you launch the instances. This means that you have to deploy the EC2 instances or the other resources within your subnet. Finally, implement security. So you can use the security group and NACL to control network traffic. Now, let me very quickly give you three use cases. So first of all, what you can do is you can create a VPC with public, private and database subnets for the web services, application servers or databases respectively. And then multi-region setup. So set up the VPC in different AWS region for disaster recovery or, or global load balancing. Then we have hybrid cloud, which means that you can connect your on-premises network to your VPC using AWS Direct Connect to VPN. So finally, let me conclude very quickly that Amazon VPC is a very powerful tool for building the secure and flexible network environments in AWS cloud. And and friends, by understanding this core concept and the features, you can really effectively design and manage your cloud infrastructure. So I hope this quick introduction all about the VPCs, how does it work, features, benefits and the use cases will really help you understand VPC in much more detail. And with that, let's move on to the next question. Question number 242, it says, which of the following are the components of AWS side to side VPN connection? And you have to choose two correct options. What are your options? Option A, AWS Storage Gateway. Option B, Virtual Private Network. Option C, NAT Gateway. And option D, Customer Gateway. And lastly, option E, Internet Gateway. So let's check out the first correct option. And that is option B, Virtual Private Gateway. And the second correct option is option D, Customer Gateway. So let me explain this in a little bit more detail. So the VPC has an attached virtual private gateway, which is this one option B and your on premises network includes a customer gateway device, which you must configure to enable the site to site VPN connection. And then my friends, you can set up the routing so that any network from the VPC bound for your network is routed to a virtual private network. And just so you understand AWS storage gateway, which is not the correct option, but I'm just telling you it's a hybrid cloud storage solution and has nothing to do with site to site VPN connection. Coming to the NAT gateway. Well, this one is used for the private subnet to connect to the internet. And with that, let's jump on to the question number 243 that says a company needs to establish a connection between two VPCs. The VPCs are located in two different AWS region. The company wants to use the existing infrastructure of VPCs for this connection, which AWS service or feature can be used to establish this connection. So what are the options given? Option A, AWS client VPN. Option B, VPC peering. Option C, AWS Direct Connect and Option D, VPC Endpoints. So tell me, could you spot the correct answer? Well, if you look at the question, you can see that we are establishing connection between two VPCs. So establishing a connection, we are bridging, we are pairing. So try to link some words, some lines with the concept of AWS Cloud Computing. And then you can also see that the VPCs are located in two different AWS region. So what are we trying to do? We are trying to establish some kind of pairing between two AWS region. And that is why my friends option B VPC pairing is the correct answer. So let me explain my friends. So VPC pairing, it allows you to connect two VPCs within the same AWS account or different AWS account, even if they are in two different AWS region. And that's exactly given in the question as well. And with the VPC pairing, my friends, the two VPCs can communicate with each other as if they are on the same network. And this helps you leverage the existing resources and the configuration within the each VPC and VPC pairing, my friends, it does not require any separate VPN connection or additional hardware. So it uses the AWS backbone network to route the traffic between the paired VPCs. And that's why my friends, this option VPC pairing, which is option B, it really fits the scenario described in the question because it enables the company to establish a connection between the two VPCs while utilizing their existing infrastructure. 
And of course, as always, I will not leave you without the documentation. So here is the documentation from AWS on what is VPC pairing. And here you can read the virtual private cloud is a virtual network dedicated to your AWS account. And this virtual private cloud, my friends, it is logically isolated from other virtual networks that you understand that your virtual private cloud is logically separate from other virtual networks. And here you can also see that we have this VPC A and VPC B and these ones have subnets. You can see these subnets in these small boxes and then these two VPCs are paired using VPC pairing. And with that, let's jump on to the next question. Question number 244 that says which AWS service provides temporary credentials for accessing AWS resources with limited permissions. Your options are option A, AWS CloudFormation, option B, AWS CloudTrail, option C, AWS Security Token Service and option D, AWS Key Management Service. And the correct answer for this question is option C, AWS Security Token Service. So this is the documentation, my friends, where you can understand what exactly is AWS Security Token Service. So let me tell you in my words. So first of all, AWS SDS, which is the Security Token Service, provides a temporary security credentials that can be used to access AWS resources with limited permissions. And this temporary credentials, my friends, they are often used in scenarios where the users or the application need temporary access to your resources, such as cross-account access, or maybe you can say federated access. So by providing these kind of temporary access or credentials, the AWS SDS enhances the security by reducing the risk of long-term and excessive permissions. Always remember, only give access which are needed, nothing less, nothing more. And with that security tip, let's move on to the next question. Question number 245 that says, a company has a single AWS EC2 instance the company wants to adopt a highly available architecture. Now you have to tell what can a company do to meet this requirement. Your options are option A, scale vertically to a larger EC2 instance size. Option B, scale horizontally across multiple availability zones. Option C, purchase an EC2 dedicated instance. And lastly, option D, change the EC2 instance family to a compute optimized instance. And the correct answer for the same is option B, scale horizontally across multiple availability zones. Yes, that reminds me of the questions that we have also taken in the previous episodes. I think it was in part 32, I guess. So please watch that part. In that, I really explain in much more detail what exactly is horizontal scaling and what exactly is vertical scaling. And here you can read a horizontally scalable system is one that can increase the capacity by adding more computers to the existing system. And this is a contrast to the vertical scalable system which is constrained to running its processors only one computer. And in such system, the only way to increase the performance is by adding more resources into the one computer in the form of faster memory or faster CPU or the storage and friends these concepts are very simple to understand see let me give you one quick analogy here so let's say that you have a laptop now you want to increase some speed what can you do you can add some more powerful cpu one option you can increase your ram capacity that is another option so what exactly you are doing you have an existing machine you are adding some more power to the existing machine this is called the vertical scaling but the problem with the vertical scaling is that you cannot go beyond one level so you cannot keep increasing your RAM, your CPU infinitely. So there definitely is a limit to it. So that is why my friends, the horizontal scaling comes into the picture. So this is more like you want some more power. So what you do is you buy more and more computers or more and more networks or more and more laptops and join them with a network connection. And in this way, you can actually scale up to infinite limits. So I hope this quick analogy will really help you understand and remember the concept of horizontal scaling and vertical scaling. So I hope you like the questions for today. In case you have some doubts or suggestions, do let me know in the comment section. And yes, there are loads of important documentation given in the description box. Everything is free for you. Make the best out of it. And that's all for today. I will see you in the next video. Till then, stay fit, keep learning and thanks for watching.